This video looks specifically at the electrical safety zones in showers, including wet rooms, in this simple approach to what the regulations are telling us. If you are new to this, we hope to improve your understanding of shower zones, and for the more experienced, it may act as a reminder on some points. Using easy to follow drawings, we explain the different requirements. The video follows the guidance in Amendment 2 of the wiring regulations following changes that were made and we cover these here. This is the brown book and some of the regulations will be different to the old blue book. The on-site guide is also brown and the electrician's guide to the building regulations will have a brown stripe across the front of the cover. And do expect exam questions on the changes to the regulations. The wiring regulations should always be your go-to reference, but sometimes it takes a little while to decode what they are telling us. So in this video, we've done this for you and made the drawings and explanations a little easier to follow. Let's begin. We can start with showers with a basin. These are showers with a definite basin or footwell for the shower a clearly defined edge to the shower. Beginning with zone zero, this is the actual inside of the shower basin. This is where we stand and its limits are the actual volume, the space where water can collect if we plugged up the drainage hole right to the top of the basin, but only where the water would be, the inside part of the basin. And it's important that we remember this because zone one is the space above the shower basin to the outside edges. So zone zero is inside the shower basin and zone one is to the outside edge of the shower basin. There can be more to zone one depending on what we do next. If there's an accessible space below the shower basin and we do nothing, then this space is also classed as zone one and the regulations that apply to zone one above the basin will also apply to this space below it. But if we can prevent access to the space below the shower basin, then things change. If a fixed barrier is installed, preventing access to beneath the basin, and access is only possible by using a tool or a key to remove the barrier, then this space is classed as outside the zones and different, more lenient rules apply to it. Most shower basins are actually manufactured as a one-piece moulding that seals off this space down to floor level, thereby denying access to the space. Zone 2 for showers with a basin will extend 0.6 metres or 600 millimetres from the edge of zone 1 and extends around any partitions in the vicinity of the shower. It will wrap around partitions just as your arm could wrap around the partition if you were in the shower. We don't want the customer reaching out of the shower and touching dangerous electrical parts. But how far does zone two wrap around the partition? A lot depends on how thick the partition is, 50 millimeters in this case. Now imagine a 600 millimeter piece of string. Everywhere the string can reach, and still be touching the shower basin is zone 2. As we wrap it around the partition, it will only reach 550 millimetres in this example, since 600 millimetres minus 50 millimetres is 550. Then we have an area that is called outside the zones. Many years ago, this was called zone 3, but not anymore. Be careful, exam questions will try and catch you out by suggesting this is zone 3. It's not. It's called outside the zones. It extends from where zone 2 ends to a distance of 2.5 metres from the edge of zone 1. Effectively, it's 1.9 metres in width if you knock off the zone 2 width. Again, imagine a 2.5 metre length of string. Everywhere the string can reach beyond zone 2 and still touch the shower basin, is outside the zones and has reduced requirements. But we still cannot install 230 volt sockets in this area. Beyond the outside zone area, 
any remaining space in the showroom has even further reduced rules. Here, we can install 230 volt sockets, but they must be protected by 30 milliamp RCDs. And this requirement will be found in regulation 701.512.3. This table shows what electrical equipment can be installed in the different zones of a shower with a basin. Pause the video and take a moment to look at it. Similar tables can be found in the on-site guide and the electrician's guide to the building regulations and information about where to find these is given at the end of this video. Now we can look at showers without a basin. Often called wet rooms, there are some major differences to the previously discussed showers. Without a basin, there is no clearly defined lip or edge to the shower and we must define the edge of the zone by distance instead. In a shower without a basin, zone 0 and zone 1 are defined as covering the same floor area, a distance of 1.2 metres or 1200 millimetres from the centre of the fixed water outlet, the shower head in other words. There is no zone 2 in a wet room or shower without a basin, we go straight from zone 0 and zone 1 to the outside zones space. And again, getting out the string, the 1.2 metres will wrap around any partitions. How do we measure the wraparound? Again, how thick is the partition? Let's say 50 millimetres again. And in this example, we can say that the partition is 1,000 millimetres from the centre of the shower head, the water outlet. 1,200 millimetres minus 1,000 minus 50 leaves just 150 millimetres for the wraparound behind the partition. The height of the zones is important too. This can determine just where the luminaires, fans and switches can be installed and the IP ratings and voltages of them. The standard minimum height is 2.25 metres from floor level. This height cannot be reduced. If the ceiling is lower than 2.25 metres, then everything up to the ceiling will be in the zone. However, if the water outlet, the shower head, is installed above 2.25 metres from the floor, then the zone height moves up with it, so that the water outlet will always be inside the zones, as shown here. The height and width of zone 0 must be understood. There is no shower basin, so no lip, to determine a height. In this case, zone 0 is said to be a height of 100 millimetres from the floor surface, all the way out to 1.2 metres, and wrapping around any partitions at the same 100 millimetre height. So zone 0 occupies the first 100 millimetres of height, and zone 1 is the space above it, up to the minimum height permitted for the zones. Looking at a floor plan, we have zone 0 and zone 1 extending out to 1.2 metres. There is no zone 2, so we are straight into outside the zones, and this extends 2.5 metres from the edge of zone 0 and zone 1. Beyond 2.5 metres, we have this area with greatly reduced requirements, the general requirements. We can install 230 volt sockets in this area if they are 30 milliamp RCD protected and there is no height requirements for this beyond area either. And this table should help you to select equipment for the different zones. Something similar is shown in the IET books and these are listed at the end of the video. Pause the video and consider the differences to the previous table. Remember, there is no zone 2 in a shower without a basin. A few general points to mention. Underfloor heating and wall heating installations, except selve, must be covered by an earthed metallic grid, and heating cables must be in an earthed metallic sheath. All circuits in the shower location must have 30 milliamp RCD protection except self circuits. And any circuit passing through zone 1 or zone 2 must have 30 milliamp RCD protection 
accept self-circuits, even if they are not supplying equipment in the zones. The 230 volt source for self-circuits must be outside the zones. This is usually a 230 volt transformer. The transformer and the 230 volt cables must be installed outside the zones. Regulation 701.512.2 is about external influences, water in this case. All equipment must be correctly IP rated for the location in which it is installed. The IP rating specified should be regarded as a minimum. The installer may wish to increase the IP rating but should not decrease it. And lastly, those books. I use all three books on a regular basis. Each book has additional information that is not in the others. And if in doubt, we always default to what the wiring regulations tell us. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful and informative. And that you've added some more useful information to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.